Hello, I'm Odin. And, oh wait, uh, hello, I'm Odin. And this time, I'm gonna pick up right where I left off from the last video. And in this video, it'll be the second part and the completion of the upper body or chest of Mechagodzilla. The first thing that I'm going to finish is the trap door that covers the energy beam emitter that is in the chest. I still have the cutout piece from building the frame, and I use that to create a new door made from styrene plastic. The plastic will be a center core of the finished door. Before we dive too deep into this, let me say thank you to this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has got 10 challenging dungeons, each with a boss that requires specific teams and strategies to beat, and that's just the start. If you care about storytelling, it's got an awesome, fully voiced campaign with 12 locations and 3 difficulties to explore. And there are 13 unique factions, like Dwarves, Orcs, the Undead, or the Badass Human Knights. Raid also has an incredible 460 unique champions, each with their own design, skills, and strengths. And Raid is super active, with over 200,000 clans and 25 million players, and it's only getting bigger. This means that Raid has basically endless content and infinite ways to play, and there's never been a better time to get started. My favorite thing about Raid is the design and the art. I mean, each of the champions are fully decked out, with multiple visual upgrades as you level them up, and the animation is based on real actors and motion capture performances. Raid is always adding new content, and this month, the biggest ever event is out. It's the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. And to help everyone get started, they're giving away a super special champion, Bulwark. He's going to be a huge help in the tower against those bosses. If you want to get a head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description, and you'll get yourself a free Void Champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, some energy refills, and even an Ancient Shard as soon as you get in-game. I mean, look at this cool champion you're going to get for free. You're going to find your extra rewards in the game right here in your inbox. But this offer is only available for the next 30 days. You can help support my channel. Click the link in the description and get in the game. Okay, yeah, that's going to work. That'll make it, that'll make it good and stiff. I'm going to glue the foam to either side of this plastic. I scratch up both sides with some hunter grit sandpaper. Contact cement will grip much better to that texture than it would to just the smooth plastic. But it still needs to have the right profile, which includes this cut-in part on the bottom. I've coated one side of the styrene with contact cement, and I also add contact cement to a piece of 2mm HD foam. After a couple of minutes, the contact cement has mostly dried, and I can stick the two pieces together. I left the foam oversized. It's easier to cut the foam down to size than to stick together pre-cut parts that are the perfect size. Then I repeat these same steps for the other side of the plastic. After both sides are glued on, I use a grinding bit to smooth the sides out and to slightly round the corners on the door. So you might be wondering, why did I bother to layer three pieces together? Why, why go through this trouble? Why not just use the foam one that you cut out? Well, basically because the foam one's never going to be as straight permanently as the one of the card in the middle, and uh, it's going to be stiffer, right? So when it opens up with the hinge just on the bottom, it'll actually stay flat. And then the reason for not just making it completely out of foamed PVC or straight styrene, by putting the foam on either side, the, e, the EVA HD foam on either side of the styrene plastic, when it's painted, it'll all have the same look. It won't be this one piece that's going to reflect light differently and call attention to itself. It'll become part of the whole because it's all gonna have the same texture under the paint. There are some raised details on the door that I need to make next. I cut another layer of two millimeter foam and trace out the raised line pattern that I want using a wooden coffee stir stick as reference for the size of the lines. And I was aware of how much foam I was cutting. There's so little material in the final piece that if I overcut one of the inside corners, I would probably just cut all the way through and have to start over. After cutting it out, I still need to glue it down. And this is also tricky because the lines need to be straight and centered on the door. I place some scrap foam across the middle, which allows me to stick the bottom edge where I want it and then I can just remove the scrap piece and stick everything down carefully. It's nice to see this door finished and fitting. Now I need to complete the bottom half. 
I add in a piece of 16 millimeter thick foam to fill in that cutout part and then draw another raised panel line pattern, but I've sized it to fit the lower panel. So one of the issues I'm having cutting out something this small with a ruler that's larger than the piece I'm cutting out, if I was to lay the piece down and then put the ruler on it, I'm now on an angle. Now, realistically, that's not that big of a deal, but if you're worried about it, and I usually am because I don't want it to end up being a little bit crooked, what I've been doing is taking scraps of the same thickness of material and putting that on either side or around what I'm working on, and now I can take the ruler and set it down to the line where I need it to be, and it's flat all the way across because I've got more material holding it up, right? Then you hold it in place, and you can make your cut, and your piece comes out okay. So I've got use for scraps. And it's a different challenge to glue in place because it's vertical. The compartment is supposed to look like it seals shut, so I add a little wall inside to meet the back of the door and fill the gap between the two panels. So I still need to put the rivets on, right? That's the last detail I really need to do overall before I'm totally finished and can start painting it. But as far as the door goes for his uh, lightning bolt attack, energy beam attack, this is it. I'm not gonna go further than this in this video because I'm gonna make all of this work later. For now, here's the door, it's gonna fit on, and I, I, I wish I could just glue it on because I wanna see it in place. So I'm really tempted to just grab some sewing pins and pin it in place just so it can be here so I can see it because it looks finished with it on. It won't look finished without it. I stick four tiny pins into each of the corners to hold the door on. They don't go through the door. The pins are just stuck into the door frame. The last big detail to make are all the spines that are on the back of Mechagodzilla. I measure each of the back spines. There are eight total. There are three outer pairs and then the two big spines in the center. I multiply the measurements by the scale that I want to use and I get a size that the spines should be on my costume. Fast forward an hour or so and I have a set of spine patterns that all fit. Now I did increase my scale multiplier a little to get a slightly better fit. I got Godzilla in my shop. <laughs> it's, it's one of those weird things where you, you add the one detail that, okay, so I was saying this was an important detail. Well, it is from the front. This was important from the front. This detail transforms it from Ram Man, from Masters of the Universe, into Mecha Godzilla, and yes! Not gonna make those out of foam. <laughs> I decided to make this set just like the set for my neck, where I cut multiple layers of foam and glue them together to get the thickness that they should be. Well, that's interesting. Out of 10 mil, I effectively need four of each, because I've got two core for these and two for the other side, and then these, I always just want to make four thick. Uh, okay, yeah, all right. All right, all right, here we go. What I'm mumbling about is my plan for how thick each of the spines are. I have traced all the patterns onto some 10 millimeter thick HD foam, and I cut them out bigger than the trace lines because I need to glue all the layers together. All eight of these spines will have two layers of 10 millimeter foam in the center. The smaller outside spines will have two more layers of six millimeter foam glued on as well to make them 32 millimeters thick. And those two center spines, they're even bigger. So they will get two more 10 millimeter layers and that'll make them 40 millimeters thick. With all the 10 millimeter layers glued together, I cut out some six millimeter parts for the outside rows of the spines. And I'm still cutting them all larger than my trace pattern. And once everything is stuck together into four layer stacks, including the two big center spines, it's been well over two hours of cutting and gluing and mashing. I wanna make sure that everything is stuck together. I don't wanna have an open seam pop up when I start cutting into these. I think before I do the tail, I need to order some 32 millimeter thick foam. I don't need to do this operation again. This is excessive. Of course, you may be wondering, oh, why didn't you, uh, why are you making them solid? Why don't you just make them like, like boxes? I mean, they doesn't have to be solid. It's, it's, it's overkill, isn't it? Um, maybe. 
I would rather it be solid and, and survive being packed in the car. So at the last minute, when I bring it out of the car and put it on in the parking lot, so I can actually go stomping into a con, I don't want to have one of the spines that are supposed to be made out of space titanium bent. So I figured it was worth it to make them solid. Now I can cut out the stacks of foam on my bandsaw, cutting on the pencil line that I can see on the top layer. I can get the sides cut very cleanly this way, even through all of this thick foam. The blade that I have for my bandsaw is a scalloped saw blade. It's shaped more like a bread knife than a traditional wood saw blade, and it's much thinner. But it's about 3 quarters of an inch wide, or 19 millimeters for all my civilized friends. No problem for straight cuts, but the tighter curves can be harder to get, and the back of the blade can mark the curve as it passes by. Now, of course, the edges of the spines aren't flat, and I can tilt the table by bandsaw 45 degrees and make angled cuts. And I cut off the bottom two layers on an angle, but I can see the center seam of the spine, so I'll just follow that with a saw blade. Then flip the piece over and cut again, following the center line, or my cut, whichever is more or less accurate, and I get pointed edges around all the sides of the spines. Now you may be asking, why did you bother to cut the sides flat and then cut them onto angles? Just glue the right size foam first and then go right to angle cutting. Well, I've done that in the past. And what happened to me was that I had holes in the angle cuts where the layers didn't match up quite right. And when that happens on the sharp peak, it's not fun to fix. So I just use a little more foam and have no extra cleanup patchwork to do later. With all the spines cut, it's time to fit them onto the back, which you can see is not flat. So I'm grateful that these six outer spines on the back can just be glued to the back permanently, and there they are. The middle one, I actually have to make removable because that's how I'm gonna hide the zipper. So the middle one will end up fitting in, kind of like that. And what's interesting is I had to make all sorts of weird cutouts on a lot of the spines in order to fit the topography of the of of his back. So it kind of fit like that. The little one had some extra to match the six millimeter panels. The center spines were both cut to add a curve and had a little extra added to fit over that big shelf that's on the chest band. One additional thing I added was a small hole on the inside to tuck the zipper pull into, because I don't want it hanging out when the suit is on. But what I'm gonna need to do is add a brace on either side so that these can Velcro on and actually stay on there, because this is what's gonna hide the zipper. In order to do the Velcro bit, what I wanna do is take a piece of the kneeling pad. This is the thick, heavy-duty kneeling pad from Harbor Freight Tools. Cut those into a triangle and then I'll glue them on and make an extra wide kind of a flange on the base. Now this is not in the movie, but I don't think this is gonna take away from the look of Mecha Godzilla because it's in between all of the spines, it's on the back. I don't think this is that big of a deal. So this, even though it's kind of big, I'm not worried about it. So I'm gonna glue this on and then I, will, I can line the bottom with a couple of spots of Velcro and I can put Velcro on the back of the suit and then the back spine can Velcro on and hide the zipper and I'm ready to put some rivets on this thing. This is actually the last big detail for the chest, finally. I draw a pencil line to follow these brace pieces as I glue them on. I need them to match the curve of the back I've got it set up so the center spines are gonna be able to stick in using Velcro. But something else I noticed, I needed a tab to fill in the gap between the spines. So I've got the top spine that kind of hooks in. There you go. And then you get the tab here that you just kind of press in place. I've got a little shelf underneath. So you press the tab in. Yeah, just, there you go. And then the bottom spine, Goes on right up against that. And that's it. Zipper's covered. I've got all eight spines on. I've got my door ready to go. I just need rivets. <laughs> this is, it's happening. It's almost done. This is great. All right. <laughs>
I've been saving these little circles from my sheets of foam chain mail, so I have a bag full of these that are two millimeters thick, eight millimeters wide, and they're all circles of EVA foam. I use a ruler and a pencil to mark where I want the rivets to go. This will help me keep a straight line and an equal distance of 15 millimeters. I use super glue to stick the rivets onto the suit. Cyanoacrylate glue sets up very fast with EVA foam. Maybe not as fast as sticking your fingers together, but fast enough that it's easy to work with. Of course, I knew that this project was coming up. I have been thinking about making Mechagodzilla for a couple of years, and during that time, the rivets were always a concern. So thank you to Ben Eady and Foam Armory for the perfect scrap for making rivets. Would I buy the chain mail just to get the tiny circles? <laughs> you know something? I just might if I needed to, because I'd still have the chain mail that I could use afterwards. For those of you who know, right, and I know there's fans that are aware of what the details actually are, all the rivets I have are the same size and they shouldn't be. So I'd like to acknowledge that. All the rivets shouldn't be the same size. Some of these should be bigger. Not a whole lot, it's subtle. So instead, I've actually just spaced some out more, which is also true for the suit. At least that's something I can control easily. So I'm only gonna use one size of rivet over my entire suit because I really like the look of this particular rivet and I've got them. Uh, so I'll just spread them out when I need to. And um, you know, I'm not gonna have different sizes. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna look fine. One last good look at all the rivets before I spray everything with black Plasti Dip paint. I apply two coats of Plasti Dip spray and get a good base black. I've taped over the zipper and the Velcro. The door and center spines will be painted separately. The base coat is just silver. It's interesting to me that all the toys, models, and the artwork that I've seen all show different values of silver, where some panels are darker and some panels are lighter. But when I watch the movie, Mechagodzilla is just bright silver with a little bit of shading. There are no darker panels. Airbrushing on the shadow effects really brings out the parts to me, and I think it's an important thing to do. I could just do a wash of some sort, but that would really dull the silver just a little, and I really like how bright the silver looks. Most of the materials I use for this project I picked up locally. I put a list in the description. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got Mecha Godzilla happening. I, this is cool. So I still got those crazy, like you know, human arms, and that's kind of a bummer. So the next video, I'm definitely gonna be making the arms for this thing, and then I'll start refining a couple of things, like making sure that the head fits my head a little bit better. Remember, I added the the 10 inch lift inside the the hinges here. Well, that gets the helmet off my head, but. I'm not really in it as secure as I should be, so it makes it really kind of hard to make it move. And I definitely need an assistant to get into this thing. As I try to put the helmet on myself, the battery is currently sitting in exactly the wrong spot, which makes the whole costume sit a little wrong. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need help, but that's okay, because that's all stuff I can do later. Right now, I've got the chest done. I've got spines that are off to the side because I can't put those on by myself either. I've got, it's Mechagodzilla. This is really a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to having the entire costume. I am excited for heat stroke. I'm excited for the cons that are coming up, uh, but I am gonna be taking a quick break. I'm gonna be doing a couple of other projects for the next couple of weeks, just to break it up a little bit. I've always enjoyed doing that on my channel, having multiple different things going on to, to keep a variety going. So for those of you who have followed for the last three weeks on the Mechagodzilla progress, Thank you guys very much. Don't worry, Mechagodzilla is going to come back in early February where I'm going to make the arms. But until then, I'm going to make a couple of other things because this is how Odin makes. Okay, why do I suddenly feel like Sam the Eagle from the Muppets? In the close-up camera, I still look like Ram Man.
<laughs> I got to solve that problem. I want to thank Wes, Darren Rowan fans, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.